It's good to be here today at Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church. I want to welcome all the ones that's uh, here uh, with us in the pews today. I want to welcome all the ones that are on Facebook. Uh, the title of the sermon today is going to be Speaking Our Language. Speaking Our Language. Uh, Skyler, if you will, put up uh, the, the people on the Facebook for just a minute. And uh, I, I just want to thank them and I want... Uh, to show their picture. This is a lot of the ones that uh, we have that follow us, and we appreciate so much the ones that uh, are not only in the church, but the ones that are on the outside uh, of our church here at Nancy's Creek, but they continue to follow us, and we thank you so much. Now, next week, uh, we're going to be having a guest speaker, a Gideon speaker, and he's going to come uh, Robert Macero, and he's coming to speak to us, and uh, he'll be with us bringing the message next week, and uh, we're glad of that. Let's start with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Well, this is the first Sunday, so uh, we usually have Bible trivia. Last week we had uh, Books of the Bible uh, contest, and this week's going to be Books of the Bible too. So we'll see how many know anything about the books of the Bible. Go ahead, Scott, and get us started. There. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting game of Books of the Bible Survival. In this game, you must quickly decide between two books of the Bible. You can hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book, and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book, and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you're still standing after all ten questions, you will be crowned the ultimate Books of the Bible Survivor Champion! Once we start the survival challenge, you'll only have five seconds to answer each question. So everyone, please stand up, do a big stretch, and let's begin! Which book comes after the Book of Numbers? Raise one hand for Leviticus. Raise two hands for Deuteronomy. The answer is Deuteronomy. Next question. Which book is the last book of the Old Testament? Raise one hand for Zephaniah. Raise two hands for Malachi. The answer is Malachi. Question number three. Which book is the second book in the New Testament? Raise one hand for Mark. Raise two hands for Luke. The answer is Mark. Here's the next question. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Raise one hand for Job. Raise two hands for Jude. The answer is Joel. Well done. Now, which book is the last book of the Gospels? Raise one hand for Luke. Raise two hands for John. The answer is John. Good work. Now, which book is one of the minor prophets? Raise one hand for Micah. 
Raise two hands for Joshua. The answer is Micah. Next question. Which book is a major prophet that foretold the birth of Jesus? Raise one hand for Isaiah. Raise two hands for James. The answer is Isaiah. Very impressive if you're still standing. Which book is a letter that Paul wrote? Raise one hand for Ephesians. Raise two hands for Lamentations. The answer is Ephesians. Only two questions to go. Which of these books is closer to the middle of the Bible? Raise one hand for Psalms. Raise two hands for First Samuel. The answer is Psalms. Here it is, the final question. Which of these books comes first in the Bible? Raise one hand for Esther. Raise two hands for Job. The answer is Esther. Amazing job to everyone who is still standing. You really know your books of the Bible, and you have earned the title of the ultimate books of the Bible Survivor Champion. Hallelujah, I'm still standing, yay. Isn't that good? Yep. Skylar, give us our scripture, sir. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. It's good to be a, a child of God. You know David. He was just a shepherd boy. And he was sitting out in the field, tending the sheep, doing, doing his job. You know, in, in those days when you were a shepherd, you spent most of your time with the flock. So you stayed out with the sheep, and, and people would bring you your meals and everything out there to where you was staying with the sheep. But you usually had some uh, tent or something set up where you would be able to sit out there and take care of them. But now David, if you study him in the Bible, you find out that not only was he a shepherd boy, he was also a man after God's own heart. He was the one that killed the giant. David became the king. If God be for you, who can be against you? But he wasn't the one who always did good things. You remember that David was the one that stole another man's wife. He, he also did some bad things, but God still moved him up to a position of power. God can do whatever God wants to do. And if God loves you, he can position you into a situation where you can grow and be something great in this land. Let me give you a nugget that will help you 
in your day-to-day -day life, the power of life and death are in the tongue. That's where the power is, is in the Word of God. If you speak the Word of God, it can change things. The Word of God is spoken, and it can move and do things. God wants you to know that you have the power within yourself to change situations and circumstances by speaking. One day while David was out tending the sheep, a lion came creeping out of the wood line there and snatched one of the sheep. And David, this is, uh, said, not on my watch. It's not happening on my watch. And he took his slingshot and killed the lion. And he didn't even hurt the sheep that the lion had snatched up. See, the Bible says the devil goes to and fro like a roaring lion, like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion, but it's like a roaring lion. He goes seeking who he may devour. Amen. You're a Christian, and you have the not only the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, but the ability to speak the Word and change things. He didn't even hurt the sheep. They would be very difficult to do to be able to use a slingshot to hurl and hit a lion and kill the lion without touching the sheep. Several weeks went by. And his troubles wasn't over. Sometimes we feel like when we have a little problem, it may be a major problem to us, but we have to realize that God is going to see us through. Amen. Whatever the situation is, he dealt with the lion, and now all of a sudden a bear comes upon him. But he does the same thing to the bear that he does to the lion. David killed the bear without hurting the sheep. God used that to lift his skirt. He said, what I am to the sheep, the Lord is to me. He stopped the thing that would devour me. David stopped the thing, but God will stop the thing that devours you. Right. What I am to the sheep, the Lord is to me. I am a survivor. Every cancer survivor ought to shout, Glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory, every AIDS survivor or to shout. Every person that's been in a car wreck and was able to walk away from that wreck or to shout. Woo. Every person that didn't look like you were going to make it, but you're still here and you're still making it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody who was sick and they thought that they weren't going to make it, but God pulled you through, you are to shout, Glory! Hallelujah! Tell your mama that they didn't know you were going to make it like you are making it today. You grew up to be the person that you are today because God is in your life. Skillful. David was so skillful that he killed the lion and saved the child. 
He killed the lion and saved the sheep. God reveals himself in language that you can understand. To David, he revealed it in the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. To you, he may deliver it in another aspect because you're not uh, tending the sheep. You're working in different jobs, but God will reveal in a language that you can understand. The Lord is my shepherd. David is a protector. You have to be a protector to understand the power that it gives you to protect the innocent. People take you for granted when you're a protector. In my job, I spend a lot of time protecting people. I don't get a lot of gratitude sometimes, but I work hard to do what I can to make sure that people are safe and secure. They don't know how much it costs to be a protector. And it's comforting to know that when you are a protector, that you are protected. God is my protector. The Lord is my shepherd. Glory be to God. I will not face my destiny alone. You may face in your life lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. But God will see you through. I must not become so distracted by the lions and the tigers and the bears that I forget the Lord. Amen. I have to depend upon the Lord because he wants me to know that he is my protector. Shepherd would allow himself to be a personal possession the Lord is my shepherd. When you say something is my book, or this is my towel, or this is my water, or my iPad, and I own it, when you show ownership of it, you claim it to be yours. That's why I, when I say the Lord is my shepherd, he is my shepherd, glory be to God. The God who owes everything would humble himself to allow himself to be owned by anything is just mind-boggling. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Whenever I need him or whenever I want him, even if the church is closed, even if the house is locked down, or the prayer line is closed, or, or whatever, I, I shall not. That's a commandment. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not want. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But we're always wanting something. But the Bible says, I shall not want. So forget intimidating me, running up in my face and telling me what I'm not. Trying to tell me that you are so much more than I am because I lack something that I need in my life to be creative. But I have what I need in my life to be created. And I shall not want. Somebody holler, I shall not want. I, shall not want. I refuse to want. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to 
pace myself. I refuse to deprive myself. I refuse to be unsettled or nervous or uncertain about the situation because God said to me, I shall not want to tremble. Back out of the room God put you in. No. Stand firm in the room that God put you in. To give up your job because you didn't like me. To let you let you write something about me or, or say something indignant about me. Talk about me. I don't care because God loves me. Amen. Yes, I shall not want. Write whatever you want to write. But I shall. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I don't have to search for my next opportunity. All I have to do is follow him. It is his job to find me the green pastures. It is not my job to say, I need some grass. I need some grass. Anybody seen any green grass around here? No. Where's the green grass? Where's the next job? Where's it at? He maketh me to lie down in abundance. To the sheep, the green pastures are prosperous. To the sheep, the green grass is a, an abundance. But he told me to lie down in green pastures because he wants me to rest there. We need to get that rest. I don't know, but that word right there is powerful to me because I can rest in God. That's what he's telling me to do. It's not enough for me to put you in green pastures. I want you to rest in what I put you in. In whatever situation or circumstances you find yourself in, I, God, have made arrangement for you to be in that position so that you could learn, so that you could be promoted, so that I could advance you. I moved you from here to there. I wrote, rooted you to put you in a place where the grass was green. And you're still pacing the floor. Were you still pacing the floor because you were nervous? And the Holy Ghost said, lay down. Lay down. Give up to where God placed you. God said, lay down. God said, lay down in my love. Lay down in my rest. Lay down in my peace, in my opportunity. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You have to understand that rapid waters could sweep the sheep away. And the wool upon the sheep were so thick that if they got in the water, the water would soak into the wool and be heavy and take them to the bottom and the sheep would drown. So him keeping us away from rapid water is a, a blessing. They fall in and drown. And God is so sensitive to how much weight that you can carry. He's already measured you. God knows the number of hairs that you have on your head. He don't have to count so much on me anymore. <laughs> but God wants to let me drink from the water that is not running fast. Lord, I need you. And at every stage, I... Pray like this, Lord, I don't understand anything that you don't want me to understand. I don't want a job if you don't want me to have that job. 
I don't want a friend if you don't want me to have that friend. I don't want a companion if you don't want me to have that companion. He leadeth me. I rebuke the spirit of envy. I rebuke the spirit of jealousy. What one person can stand, another person can't stand. You've got to move too much wool away from yourself so that you'll be able to continue on. God already knows what you can stand. If God puts you in still water, be happy and drink from the water he put you in because God has already weighted your capacity and knows what you're able to stand because God loves you. He is to me what I am to the sheep. He is as careful for me as I am careful for that which I love. Let there be something that is speaking what David has said as the shepherd talks. You know, I had a person call me and they was telling me that, you know, they had uh, was cooking and all of a sudden they had, had seen God in what they were doing in their uh, workmanship. They had an egg and they cracked that egg open in the morning to cook them an egg in the morning. And, and they said uh, there was three parts to the egg. There was the shell and the white and the yolk. And it reminded them of the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father. And they saw God in their situation. Isn't it amazing how we can see God in our situation? You know, God will show up. God knows how to show up. He knows when to show up. And he knows where to show up. Show up in your life. God is going to use everything you ever learn to reveal himself to you. It is not just about the books of the Bible. It's about having your eyes opened. The eyes of your understanding enlightened. That you might see him in all of his glory. The Bible says that the heavens are telling of the glory of God. Nature is telling us of the glory of God. The wind is telling us of the glory of God. Even the eagles that are flying above us are telling us about the glory of God. Every time the eagle stirs his nest, God speaks our language. The Bible said he restoreth our soul. Ooh, good God of mercy. The only we, reason we survive grief, the only reason that we don't lose our mind or cry till we die is because God restores our soul. Even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, God restoreth our soul. God is a restorer. And it's not that you don't still love or still miss, but all of a sudden in your life where catastrophes have happened, God starts restoring your soul. And you start to feel like, I think I'm going to be okay. I think I'm going to make it. Because God is restoring my soul. Madison couldn't do it. The doctor couldn't do it. Surgery couldn't do it. Flowers or candy couldn't do it. It couldn't any of those things do it. But God said that he would do it. He would restore your soul. My cup runneth over. Runneth over. This is my cup running over. 
God wants you to know that he's going to fill you beyond the capacity that you're able to hold so that somebody else can experience the Jesus, the Lord, the glory of God that you know and have in your life. I'm not saying to you that you don't know God, but God didn't call you to yourself. He called you to him. But there's a certain overflow that just runs over on the top of you and you find yourself flowing into something that you can't or don't understand. That's why you got to get around somebody that's got more than enough. That if you get close to them, if, if you touch them, it'll fall on you. Because if any two shall agree as touching anything on earth, glory be to God, it'll come to pass. God gave me more than enough. He gave me the power. God gives the power. If I just have enough for me, then I wouldn't have time for you. I couldn't be bothered with you because what little bit I had, I'd have to hold for myself. But since God gives me a running over, I have something that I can share with you, glory be to God. I can still be full, and I can still preach because there's enough power to jet fuel an airplane up here, glory be to God. Everything that's in you and everything that's in me is running over because God is blessing you. It's running over in this house. You're a spiritual son, a spiritual daughter. I feel the overflow running right here, right now. God will teach you. He used what David had and taught him and taught the daughter Daughter, you don't have to fear any evil. The shepherd is both a fighter and a protector. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Man, there ain't no meal like having one in the presence of an enemy. <laughs> Where you got a seven course meal set up, glory be to God, and you're ready to enjoy it, hallelujah. And there ain't no devil in hell can stop you from enjoying it. He anointed my head with oil, glory be to God. You know, if if he anoint the sheep's nose with oil, if they stick it down in a hole where the snake has crawled, uh, they, it, it's a protection from them. It, it keeps them from being bitten by the snake is a snake repellent. The word surely, surely, virus or not, job or not, career or not, wife or not, husband or not, friend or not, if you take everything else away from me, you cannot take away my surely. David will me a surely, a surely, is in my belly, a, a surely is in my spirit, a, a surely is in my mind. I may have lost my car, I may have lost my house, but I still have God and I have surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And to God be the glory, hallelujah, in Jesus. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who all?